So you wrote a book, yes, Morgan, my love. And how did you get the idea for this book? <laughs> Let me say it in a different way. How did the idea get me? Uh, I had an idea to write a novel about the possibility that a soul and a, and a body are different entities. Mm -hmm. So I would like to play in a philosophical way what happens, what, what does it say about life when we are just a soul and a body? What does it say about love or what does it say about who we are? And um, I did some investigations, which means I read books about it and then somebody says to me, well, you should really investigate by experience. Who said that to you? Well, that's my wife, oh. <laughs> Ariane. She told me, uh, maybe you should do something like a regression therapy or so. Mm -hmm. And I said, come on, regression therapy. <laughs> let's, let's be serious, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I was, in a way, I was also very curious about it. About, hmm. What will there be on my hard disk then? But uh, I approach this from a rational way. So I, mm -hmm. I, I, I found a regression therapist, uh, Ilya. I found her because there was an interview written with her in a magazine, and I saw a picture. That oh, she looks great. So she doesn't. She doesn't uh, seem to me a person who is really from well, Guna Guna or she floating she somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I think she was very down to earth. Mm -hmm. And that convinced me to call her and to make an appointment and I had an appointment with her and the first appointment I was only checking my questions. Mm -hmm. How do you know this? Are you certain? What's the science behind this? And after three hours she said, Oh well you, you spent all the time I had for you. You should come back next week and then shut up and go on the couch and you will have your own experience. Exactly. And I had really no idea what to expect uh, because I, I thought, well, a regression, well, that takes an hour, well, maybe one hour and a half, and then I go on with my day. But that turned out a little bit different and that was the moment the idea of the book caught me. So what happened in that session? Well, Ilya, she was looking for, for a kind of entrance to my subconscious. And there was a moment in my life when I was surprised by, by fear. Uh, I worked for television and we had a great uh, raid. So my chief said we go out for a weekend of having fun and drinking booze and for skydiving. Mm -hmm. And I was in a way really looking forward to it because of, well, I'm a thrill seeker. And um, especially <laughs> on that age. So how, how old were you then? 26 so uh, and but I was caught by surprise of by, by by fear then we were in the in in the dressing room uh, well packing our parachute uh, gear and then I was well I froze I was completely uh, uh, well overwhelmed by panic and there was a voice in me if you that said if you don't for a jump you will die and I what <laughs> but Okay, I found my escape. I said, I'm not going to jump. I take some flying lessons and nobody noticed. But in this regression, or before it, uh, Ilya was push, uh, pushing me back to that experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, my skepsis was very strong. I said, oh my God, do you, what, I w what am I doing here? And I got those, I call those the Muppet uh, grannies, uh, Wall of a Stettler, uh, in my mind who are always spoiling everything <laughs> or, or criticizing everything but they 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 silenced after a couple of minutes and then i got an experience and i say i because the, my perspective was from my own view i was hanging on a parachute wearing a uniform and there was a, an instant knowing in my body oh my god this is september 1944 market garden gingle heath and the strange thing was that it was not kind of kind of memory, but uh, well, not kind of a memory of my mind. It was a memory of my body. Yes, exactly. So the my fear was there. My my adrenaline was there. The rush. The rush was there. Yeah, and it was not like a beautiful movie. It were it, it were flashes, rushes. Um, but I was so scared. So. And, and that was ju just the beginning of the regression. 
and I wasn't prepared for an experience like this. Mm -hmm. So you, um, I think she led you through death. <laughs> you can say, uh, because I, I uh, went through the whole experience of 1944 again, uh, and also I ex experienced my own death, and that was very heavy, but also um, a kind of relief because fear stopped. Yeah. So it was I was experienced the fear. And I was thinking, oh, as long as I feel the fear, I'm alive. So I love fear, but I hate fear. So it was, you know what I mean? It was mixed. It's exactly that. Exactly, yeah. And then this 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 bullets bullets came, and um, I was laying on the couch, and my body was shaking, and I was crying, but I was really upset about the authorities who just, oh, wow, well, they they screwed us with mm -hmm. this idiot war and things, but. The strongest feeling that came free was sorrow. There was a like a boom of sorrow that exploded in uh About your own life, or about oh, lost well, ones? Not, well, yeah, the lost, uh, not not my own life. Mm -hmm. No, my own life was 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 done. That was uh, that was the f the freedom of the relief of. Oh, I don't feel fear anymore. But at the same time, there was a, the sorrow was about. I couldn't tell the people I love. I love them. And that was something that turned to be a very strong drive to write this novel but uh, but uh, more to do the investigations mm -hmm. because when I well Ilya she asked me of that at that moment well, uh, after I died go back to your youth and describe or well go back to your youth uh, okay well, I'll go back to my youth no. the youth well, of the past life yeah the youth yeah, you, yeah. and uh, what do you see and, and who are you then? And well, I described a house, a little white house with a shed and was, there was something about the bike. There was something with a bike. And then Ilya asked, what's your name there? And then I became a little bit pissed because, I said, ah, how do I know what my name is there? And, uh, what a terrible question. Uh, let, let's stop with this. And, but then she, she, she asked me a, a very intelligent question. If you knew, what would have been your name then? And then I was, was uh, quiet for a time and then from some depth of my mind or soul came a name and that was Morgan. I said, my name is Morgan. And that was a name I never used. If, if, if I said Harry or Johnny or Philip or Billy or... Yeah, yeah. I was doing something different now. Morgan. And Morgan can be a first name or a last name. Yeah, but I was sure it was a first name. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, after I, this regression, I, I, uh, which took more than three hours, uh, I went home. I don't know how I get there, but I, I, I got home. And after a while, I could only cry and was very, very emotional. But after a while, uh, uh, my, my ratio was there was there again and then I started my investigation I said this is ridiculous so this is a fantasy so the so I started l looking on the internet to find things that prove that it was all that approved you wrong <laughs> yeah this was, this was a <laughs> rubbish but I found a name there was only one uh, paratrooper with the name Morgan Aged 26 when he died. 26 when he died, and he came from Wales, from a little village, uh, Ponte Dawi, which was pretty close to the sea, like I described in the, in the in regression. And uh, I was curious. I, f I, I, f I um, found all the people in that area that with the same name, the, 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 the Probert, his second name, with the int intention, can I call them and say what? I experienced. Ah, no, this is this is ridiculous. I didn't I didn't call them, and because I thought, hey, there is something with the date, because in this regression, I was very sure I only experienced only one night. We were dropped, one night, and he died, and I found out this Morgan died on September nineteenth, uh, mm -hmm. and I knew from the school books that Market Garden the operation started the seventeenth. So it were two nights. So I said, ah, 
I'm free. I'm it's just not true. Bu- no, it's not yeah. true. I'm bus again. Fuck it. <laughs> but then I saw he was uh, a member of the 10th Battalion, which were dropped on Monday 18th. And there's the one night. So there was a name. And Chills, a goosebumps. Goosebumps, uh, emotions, and there was a, uh, a date. And then uh, we went to Wales uh, because, well, I was curious, but still trying to prove it was all not true. Mm-hmm. And That's the best way to investigate, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Let's go on. I had no choice. <laughs> uh, because my emotions were pretty clear. Mm-hmm. But my, my head said, oh no, can't be. So we went to Wales and we, were, we, we met someone in the village who knew Morgan, who turned out to be his formal neighbor. And by coincidence, by co- yeah, everything is by coincidence. Of course, it's um, and uh, he draw on a on a on a paper where we could find his house, which was still there, and he said Morgan's sister is still alive, and that's what I said. <coughs> Not going there. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's called Glennis, and uh, she still lives or lived in that village. But I said no, not going there. W- what should I say? Looking great for my age, or what do you say? I'm hey, your, I'm your brother. I'm your brother. Remember now. me? <laughs> oh my God, I don't. I, I even was. I was still doubting. Mm-hmm. You know, it's I still am someday. As, uh, I still doubt. But um, the next day, with the drawing of the house, we went to the street where the house is, and as soon as we entered the street my body started to talk. Goosebumps, tears, and I saw the house. I said, this is the house I saw in the regression. Differently, different because, wow, well, some, some changes, but it was, it was the house. So we, we drove home and I wrote uh, a letter to the sister with some uh, questions in it, uh, because I didn't know how she would react uh, when somebody asks about her brother. Mm-hmm. So you wrote a letter instead of content- contacting her in person? Yeah, a letter was, was, was more safe. So I wrote and she was very glad with the letter because she never talked about her brother since the war. It was blocked, it was a trauma. Uh, go on, go on, don't look back. That was the, mm-hmm. the mentality. And because of my letter, her daughters start to ask about her brother. Yeah. And she and she was 85 then, and she was never she's never been here. She never visited the grave of Morgan. And then there came a letter from a guy from the Netherlands, and want to, want to ask things about the brother. And, and uh, my go- my cover up was I was a journalist and just writing about unknown soldiers. Ha oh, ha. Oh. Just one of them. One of them. Yeah. <laughs> you picked this one. Yeah, I picked this one. And. Uh, uh, she, she, she wrote a letter back and she answered about, uh, on one of my questions, I asked ab- her about the bike. Because I saw s- there was something with the bike in the, in the regression, I saw uh, something like that. And my most skeptical friends uh, said to me, well, if there is something from Morgan in you, there should also be something of his passion in you. Mm-hmm. So I ask about the bike and I, I get the letter from Glennis with a picture of his cycling group. Cycling group? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it, they were well well dressed but Glennis said to me later Morgan was mad about the bike. He was uh, a poor uh, steel guy but in his spare time he worked, he delivered groceries to get a racing bike. So he had a racing bike, he had racing gear, and every weekend he went with his friends for a tour and they had some competition together. And what does it have to do with you then? Well, I'm a race cyclist as long as I can stand on my legs, you know. Uh, since the day I had a bike, I was three or four, I'm, um, <laughs> to change the position of the handlebar to be a race cyclist, and I, and I, and I have been a race cyclist for years. Comp- uh, in competition. Mm-hmm. It's my, my, my greatest passion. So you have the same passion? We shared our passions, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and that was for me 
almost game set and match. Mm -hmm. The name, the date, the house, the bike. And your mother came with a box of drawings that you made when you were a little child. Yeah, because I was, I was still thinking, oh, maybe Ilya pulled me a leg with this regression. <laughs> she just opened my firewall mm -hmm. and there's some wah, side story which entered my, my mind and just, well, you know. Right, that's what I was regression. still looking for an escape, you mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> you got it? And then my mother showed up with the box of all, of all things from the past, from my from, from kindergarten and everything. And there were some pictures inside, or drawings, which I draw when I was five or six or four. And you see planes, parachute, dead soldiers. Mm -hmm. So. A little boy with a trauma. Yeah. Unfinished business. Unfinished business, yeah. So that, would I, so the story caught me. Mm -hmm. I was no longer in charge. I had to so do something with this experience. And you went back to the little white house, did you? Yes, yes. Uh, um, Glennis came here. Uh, um, I invited her to come over and I said, come in September, then you have these uh, commemorations and there are flowers and, and, and uh, veterans. And, but she said, oh, I can't make it that day. Uh, I, I will come on Monday, 18th. Okay. 18th. And we will see each other on the 19th. And I, I, I said, do you know what date that is? She, they, they had no clue. So she came here and... Uh, because the 19th of September? Was the day Morgan died. Exactly. And we, we met at the Ginkgo Heath and there was well, a coach car with 70 gray women and <laughs> men. <laughs> but I knew exactly which was Gladys, and she, she walked straight into me and said, you are the reason I'm here. But she didn't know yet what I would like to tell her if I had the guts. The guts. Uh, and I had the guts, I told her what I told you. And she, she, she left this travel group and joined me to this place. And we stand together at Morgan's grave and she, she breaks into tears and I'm, I'm holding her standing on this grave so what's happening there and then she invited me to come over to wales and um, but her daughter told you something about how uh, shy she, she knows yeah she's is. very close mm -hmm. to to strange people yeah but she said to me you never felt like a stranger we were so um familiar from the first moment we saw each other we were touching each other uh, when we walk, uh, we make fun. Uh, it was going too easy for, for a stranger. Mm -hmm. Whatever's happened between the last couple of years, between the, I believe in you. I knew you. Did you have that, do you, do you understand that experience? You knew, that we knew you, that we knew each other. I came on, you came on to me. I, I wasn't meeting a stranger. No. It's hard to explain it. When she invited us to come to Wales, I visited the White House and I said, well, things are changed, of course, but I was trying to describe what I saw in the re have seen in the regression. And I remember things about the stairs. I said, wow, I think the door was here and the stairs were, stairs, no, the stairs should be there, which was correct. Behind the wall, there are still the old stairs. And I said, there's something about the front door. That wasn't the front door I remember, I can recall. It should be a closed wooden, plain wooden door without a window. And they were saying, no, now, Grandma always had this door in her house. And, well, maybe I'm wrong. And then Glenn said, well, no. Till 1942, or 90, till the war, we had this plain wooden door. So I remember the house, of course, from f longer ago. So my mind is trying to find escape, but 
can't again find or still yes, no, uh, no, not anymore now it's now it's part of my life mm -hmm. and I accept I, I accept the possibility that a part of me or I uh, was Morgan and sometimes I forget and, and then I start to doubt again well, well maybe there are other possibilities but then something happens like seeing a Canadian flag in a in the landscape for uh, for a little sh remembrance from soldiers who died there and then BAM or somebody asks me a question and I'm I s and I suddenly I, I, I break into tears and I can't um, I just uh, remember yeah. when you had the reading about the book and uh, a woman came to you or mm -hmm. a couple mm -hmm. and they had one of those wings the wings oh yeah. a woman a woman yeah it was uh, one of my first uh, readings lectures here in Oosterbeek lectures and um, so even yeah. even it was before the lecture she 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 came into uh, and she had, I think she read the book and she came to me and said this belongs to you <laughs> wow <laughs> and then she, she gave me the wings her father found here after the war. The wings that they were on, on the, the barret. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I keep, uh, I keep it like a treasure. Mm -hmm. But the strange thing is, I wrote a novel because I don't want to write only about, well, look at what happened to me. I want to put it in a bigger perspective. So I wrote a love story. And uh, when the book came out, I, was, I wasn't prepared on that people really would read it and say something about it. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, it is published in 2018 and so almost three and a half years. And I there's n I, I've had no s any skeptic reaction at all. None. Even from my most well uh, down to earth friends. That's also maybe because the way I wrote it, I put all the skeptic, uh, the skepticism, in the book with a lot of humor. And uh, but also after uh, well, an interview like this, or I've been on the radio speaking about this, people were, how do you say it, uh, caught by the story. Mm -hmm. But n nobody tells. Well, nobody was skeptic and said, "Well, you <laughs> now you have to go to the lunatic asylum or so." Well. It is the wet dream of every regression therapist. <laughs> the wet dream? <laughs> to have a client like this. <laughs> well, to wow. have a client who can really confirm the past life that came up. Yeah, well, d uh, yeah. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't happen so often. Oh, well, yeah. So it's really special. Yeah, it's special, but, if, but even uh, outside this, the, the, the community of regression therapies, uh, therapists, even, even yeah. there. Even there. They believed, they felt, it was heartfelt. Yeah, I think so. They were uh, uh, caught by the love story and by the possibility that love is stronger than death. Because you wrote about your search and you also yeah. wrote their the love, love story, story. Yeah. of Morgan and Patrice. Yeah, yeah. because that's what it's all about. You can, you, can, you can make a romantic story of, re of reincarnation. We can say, well, we w let's meet in another life, but then maybe uh, you are very ugly then, or uh, and I am blind, or I, I, I am born <laughs> in France, and, and you in Australia, mm -hmm. uh, in different, uh, well, uh, moment of time. So it's nice for a romantic idea. So that's the thing I played with. I, I don't want to be romantic about the idea of reincarnation, because it, the sorrow is still there if you lose somebody. Mm -hmm. And in this book, I follow Morgan and Beatrice, Beatrice in their youth and the war came in between their love and he died and she is st in a way still longing for him all her life and she's now very old and now she's longing to die because she believes he will be there in heaven. But in the meantime there is a, a younger guy from the Netherlands on his way to her. And she is her mind is lingering between there yeah. and here. Yeah, yeah. She's old and uh, yeah, she's dreaming of him. She sees him. She see her. Uh, yeah, she's going back to the to the days when their love started. Yeah. So it's uh, 
I think that's where the tears in the book are. Yeah. They sure are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, this is him. This is the picture Glenn has uh, sent me in the first letter. And this, well, this, it's a blow up because in, in real, this is a, sm a small picture taken just before he left to Arnhem. Yeah. So show, show them, <laughs> show them Morgan. Wow, we don't look, we don't, we don't look very similar, I think. The, the, the similarity is in the inside. Yes, that too, <laughs> yeah. So I, I can explain now uh, some of my pretty heavy reactions on, <laughs> on things that happened in the world or when they send soldiers to a war or uh, wow so sometimes I can feel okay that's connected to that period yeah. well this is the book in Dutch uh, but I got also in English and and, and uh, since a couple of months since a couple of months yeah yes. yeah so it, it's good, it had to be in English because yeah. his family has to read it, yeah, has to be able to read it. <laughs> yeah. And I hope it will, will find its way in, in the world. Shall I read? Yeah? Please. The bus stop is on the other side of the village, in front of the post office, a 15 minute walk. They slowly descend the hill from the Probert's white cottage, past the cross hands where people wave, and past the local shops over the bridge spanning the tower to Herbert Street. The shop windows are the town's eyes, following them across the square by the village hall and past the cinema where they had seen how green was my valley, gone with the wind and Casablanca, up to the Dillwyn Arms at the crossroads with High Street. Morgan walks beside her, his right arm around her shoulders, the fingers of her right hand entwined with his. But how does she feel? Empty, shattered, like she's suffocating? What if the bus doesn't come? Or it arrives too late in Swansea and he misses the train? She's totally unprepared for the overwhelming confusion she feels. Don't go. He looks at her, their faces together. This is a must. I don't want to let down my brothers. Brothers. It's the first time she'd heard him use that word. Brothers. Men who were strangers just a few months ago. She rests her head against his chest and feels his hands around her. A sculpture of two lovers outside space and time. Resolutely, but with a loving tone, he says something about trust, that she should take care of his parents, that he will write her again soon. And then follows a sentence he must have read somewhere that has always stayed with her. Love's binding force shall not be severed by distance nor time. He runs his fingers, fingers through her hair. She feels his heart pounding. In her mind's eye, she sees him running after her on the beach at Wasilly, feels him swooping her across the rink dance floor. She hears tools falling in the shed, the squeaking of the chair he's sitting in, his laughter. Of course he will come back. Montgomery is our best strategist. He won't take unnecessary risks. A few weeks, it's only a few weeks. You have everything? She asks. So, <laughs> when I return, make sure your hair is done and you look at me the way you did last night. <laughs> a smile with a serious gaze directly above. She sighs. Her body fills with dread again. The bus approaches with a threatening hum. Just go, she says feeling his arms losing their grip, hearing him say her name. Beatrice, I will see you soon. The war is going to be over in no time. Yes, see you soon, she repairs. Not knowing what else to say, 
The bus door opens. Her head is spinning. Morgan gets in, walks down the aisle and finds a spot by the window. It feels like a film, a play, his fingertips against the glass. She dramatically mirrors his gesture. They look at each other, but the reflection of the glass obscures his face. The bus begins to move. She runs alongside, a few paces, her fingertips reaching for his behind glass. She has to let go. She waves, powerless. He's off, her love, a shadow in a teetering bus. There are more than 1,700 soldiers, but this is the grave of Morgan. So uh, I can put the picture. Of course. There. I'll put the books here. Go far away. Across the foam. Your memory lives in our hearts at home. It's weird. It's weird to see your own grave. Yeah, you could say so. <laughs> Yeah, every time it's weird mm -hmm. to, because you try to understand what's maybe not meant to be understood. 